So the Mason's a good job, mate. It's challenging work. Indoors. Not going hungry. As long as there's two cars left to the planet, someone is going to want someone beaten. I can guarantee you that. Alright, enough of the accent. Uh, this is going to be a project on sim racing and how it can hopefully be put in schools somehow. Now, if you're wondering why this, this video is going to be organized oddly, because I'm making this both for my YouTube channel and a school project. So if I swear less, that's why. Currently, the track I'm on is Monaco with a uh, Mark 1 GTI. And if you get the opening intro, I hope somebody does. Uh, for all the geeks watching this video and nerds like me, wheels are T150, pedals are T3PAs, wheel stand is GT Omega. And then in on my right side, on my left side, I uh, right side rather, I have a old driving force pro, which I use for my PS2 games. I just need to use a wheel for them, like I was before, and this is the uh, understeer. Uh, so, uh, what was I saying? Right. Uh, this is going to be a lot more professional than my regular videos, because that's something I kind of want to tap into, sort of like half documentary sort of style, sort of style was, well, still keeping up my comedic persona, which is going to be quite hard to do. Uh, but I can guarantee you I'll find some way to put in a Star Wars reference or some way to put in one of these, and then I'll, uh, it's gonna be fun and very odd to edit and still somewhat daunting because my iPod screams like the size of my pinky. Um, I have an actual cameraman. My friend is being ever so gracious to do so. They say hi. Hello. I don't know how well this mic is gonna pick that up, but whatever. Great. <laughs> uh, I wish I could have a way where I could hear myself as well, but I hear what the mic is picking up as well. But I, well, I can do that, but it'd be complicated and still quite hard and it wouldn't be necessary uh, but I'm going to sh in this video I will hopefully sort of try to get you people into sim racing or give you guys some tips if you're starting if you're thinking about getting into it which is something I want I've seen a lot of people do and a lot of people have done very good jobs at it very good job at it but very few have sort of the well so if you have that teenager's, teenager's perspective, not really owning or earning your own money quite yet. So uh, basically, which ones, which wheel and pedals that you would feel less guilty for asking your parents, is essentially what I'm trying to do right here. Uh, so yeah. One quick tip I just want to say: uh, force feedback is a must. That is one thing I'm going to say off the script, I have a script in front of me right now because I can't read and look at the thing at the same time. Uh, a script is... not a script. Um, first feedback is a must if you want if you're going to be serious about it. If you don't want to be serious about it, then yeah, just get somebody like first feedback. There's a couple of good wheels that don't have first feedback that are half decent, like the Thrustmaster T80, which is PS4 only, I think. I'm on the PS3 right now. I'm running Grand Turismo 5, I think I might have said that already. Um, and then also just sort of teaching you some sim racing tips and just racing tips in general that I've learned from much better sources than I. Uh, so yes, that's it. Okay, before I get to the net and possibly get to this video, I'd like to discuss one important topic. Is this competitively viable? Eh? Uh, what I mean by that is that there is very little, there's little to no actual proven data uh, that shows that the controller is slower than the wheel. On some games, it might be easier or harder to use either one, but to use the T150, or at least that's the way that I have, to use that wheel, um, it all depends on what force feedback is driving, them up, is driving it. So force feedback, there would not be too much difference in terms of possible lap times uh, and consistency because of the difference because the differences between this and a non force feedback wheel using a rubber band, there are not too many differences in terms of feeling. Yes, some, t some wheels do have certain vibrations. I think the... I picture the Hori Racing Wheel Apex uses it, and the... Um, I think the T80 uses vibration. I 
don't think so though. Uh, but the reason why those sorts of non-force feedback motor uh, wheels exist is to give people just that slight bit of, of immersion and like, say that they play Need for Speed and they just want to have fun on the wheel and pedal set. Yeah, that's exactly what those uh, wheels provide. And if, when, when you see, as, you, as you'll see later in the video, I sort of got a taste of that um, on my old, on my PS2 when I was younger, and that's actually how I sort of uh, was aware of the sensation of uh, using a wheel for games. It was awful though. Uh, not awful awful, but uh, I didn't have a proper stand or anything for it. In terms of lap time, I have yet to conduct a test for that. I might do that in the future, but that'll be its own separate video, just because I don't want this video to go long any on for any longer than it already will be. Uh, in terms of force feedback and type of force feedback, there is, as far as I've tested, there's not much of a difference between Bit of voice feedback with my T150, which is right in the side of me, which you can't really see, and the DFP, which is under my uh, desk, right on the left side of me. Uh, there's not too much of a difference, maybe like a couple of tenths, and that's maybe about it. In terms of immersion, the T150, I definitely will say, uh, beats it out, as well as ease of use. The Driving Force Pro, as I will also go into, is not, uh, that that's not user friendly, it's just that. The sensation of weight is unreal in comparison to a road car or a more expensive wheel. So I got that for uh, 80 bucks. I got the 250 and the T3PAs uh, for 200. Yeah, about 200 bucks. So there's a it's quite a significant price gap between those two. But my opinion is worth every penny. If you can get a good condition T150, unlike my only like the one mine is in right now, uh, if you can get a very good condition T150. And the very good condition uh, TCPAs, which in my opinion is the best wheel and pedal set, uh, is the best value for your money wheel and pedal set on, on the market right now that you can buy used. Um, if you can get that, that is a very, very good starting point. If you can't get that, a DF, a Driving Force Pro or a Driving Force GT, which is just a slight bit bigger than that, and I think it has some more buttons, uh, it, it will do fine. It would definitely, definitely, definitely do fine in terms of just, if you just want to use a wheel. That's what this one YouTube channel called Color Shirt Productions uh, uses. If you just want to use a wheel, the Driving, Force GT, the Driving Force GT and Driving Force Pro will definitely work. They're not going to blow your socks off with how they feel, but they will definitely, definitely work for what, just for having a wheel for a game and have some, some sensation in it. Uh, now that I have that stuff out of the way, I will let you get into the meat and potatoes and possibly mashed potatoes and the dessert and cranberry sauce of this video. So I shall see you in the voiceover. The car is not real, but the racing is. Jimmy Broadbent. That is by far one of my favorite quotes spoken by, in my opinion, one of the best sim racers, not so much in pace, but in spirit and pure heart and passion. I consider myself a pretty passionate person. But Jimmy is simply built different. He's a man who has overcome so many things and I can't even begin to think of the concept in my head of what he's gone through. He is a living embodiment of perseverance in the Samson community. Now why am I stuck in this by talking about him, you might ask. Because he is the man who drives me to continue to believe in myself and whenever I doubt myself, whether it be in Sim or my go-kart. He inspires me and people, he inspires people as well as myself each day. Now I wish to spread the joy of sim racing to as many people as I can. How do I do this? Start a club. How do I start a club? First, you, you have to find someone who's willing to sponsor a club for your school. Then you gotta find a teacher who can. You have to learn the rules of, of clubs in your school. And of course, write a formal proposal. And yes, I know, writing a formula formally formal proposal blows, but you gotta do what you gotta do to show you, show you passion. It is a drive club, if you will. <laughs> now, I would like to go over a brief history of sim racing that is not very detailed due to time constraints, but here's the massively abridged version. The history of sim racing is a kind of a hard word to pinpoint the beginning of. Many people call Pole Position 2 as the first sim-ish game released in 1983. It had a realistic-ish for the time handling and modeled F1 tracks such as Suzuka and Fuji. 
Then you had the Le Mans game with the arcade game having actual force feedback in the wheel and modeling the elevation change as well as modeling the bumps in the road of the legendary Cirque de la Sarth. If you're wondering why I have that, it's just because Cirque de la Sarth is a very fun word to say. Fast forward to the 1990s and Gran Turismo is released and racing and car culture is now in the masses of the PlayStation 1, which won the Generations Console War by a very wide margin. Shortly after, in 2003, a studio made the game NAS NASCAR Racing Season 2003. Physics were amazing for back then, and they later on repurposed that engine to make iRacing, which is very, very focused towards online racing and is near exclusively done with online racing. Around this time, racing wheels and sim rigs were becoming much more affordable. It was that the wheels like the Logitech Momo Black and the Logitech Giant Force and Giant Force Pro were becoming widely used and popular. Gran Turismo 4 was released in 2004 and became the third best-selling PS2 game of all time. Driving Force Pro was made alongside that game and people will still call it one of the most realistic driving simulators of, the t of all time. From my opinion, I say they're blinded by nostalgia, because I've driven it and holy crap! It is a killer on the arms and it's annoying as all holy Christ to catch a spin with that wheel. Now, of course, other games supported it, but only a few select games would fully, fully support it. You can always tell if it was fully thought of, if you will, into 900 degrees of rotation, or if I wanted 180. If it was 180, then the wheels are a million afterthought, and if I wanted to 900, you knew you had a good game in your hands for the wheel. Unless you're NASCAR 14, in which case you were driving a sponge, based on, just based on the feeling alone. Anyway, after Gran Turismo, you had R-Factor and iRacing launching in 2013, and setting new standards for what racing drivers could use to train the skills, with the online focus of iRacing and the sheer realism of R-Factor 2, and it's to this day unmatched tire model and realistic force feedback. Also releasing around this time was Assetto Corsa. Its release as well and, and brought sim racing greater accessibility, as it gave you massive variety and selection of car and track combos you could, ha you could have, as well as being very easy to mod. Jump ahead to 2017, and F1 leagues for the now popular F1 games are being officially dev supported and gaining traction even, even more now that there was, that, that was the first good F1 game in like 3 or 4 years. Also in 2017, Polyphony Digital made Gran Turismo Sport and brought realistic car handling, well, I say realistic for consoles, realistic car handling and heavy online focused racing to consoles, and created more events with prize pools with pretty decent moolah. Now in 2020, when good old Daddy Rona, Rona hit sim racing, sim racing had a huge boost in popularity due to everyone being forced, being, everyone to be forced inside their homes and being bored out of their gourds. And sim racing events were broadcast out on television on ESPN. Eh, for better or for worse. As some drivers got into some very, very hot heat over their actions, so now Scott Driver is in the N-word, because, you know, they're from Texas. And another one rage quitting mid-race and losing his primary sponsor because of it, as well as many people just being punted into the stratosphere. Because, you know, online race is no danger. But as of today, sim racing is, ba racing is back, and for F1, COVID was a blessing in disguise, as we got one, as we got some one-off tracks, and it was the best thing ever for the sake of variety, as the tracks we got have never been raced in F1, and others were so good, so we only got on F1 because F1 was desperate and lowered the price, like Puerto Mar, for example, in the Nürburgring, as the Nürburgring may or may not be around in the next 10 years, which really, really sucks. Now, that was a very, very glanced over, uh version of the sim racing history. So I'm going to be doing another video and going over a much more in-depth history in sim racing in general, which will be very fun to make and research for. Now sim racing has come a very long way from its humble beginnings as a, hey that's pretty cool to a try hard, here's a new wheel that uses technology from 2005, but we tweaked it slightly from our last three, last, last wheel three years ago, and I'm charging now $400 for it. Part to you by Big Bill Hills. Yeah, thanks a freaking lot, Logitech, you lazy bunch of dinguses. Also, another quick side note, 
Not being able to use extra extravagant word usage due to school effing reeks. Anyway, it has changed a lot in the past 10, ten or more years. So I'm thing that's different in now that nowadays it's much more accessible. And I'm aware of the and I'm aware of the hypocrisy I just committed. Well not hypocrisy, but you get the point. Contradictions. Hundred dollars can buy you a half decent wheel and pedal set, like for example the Driving Force Pro, which is what I got for eighty, and was usable. Not at all the best, but it was a pretty good place to get started and made me say, Wow, this is pretty freaking right. But ten years ago you couldn't really get much of anything too good for one hundred dollars. Maybe one hundred fifty, one hundred thirty. But for a good wheel and pedal set anyway, the barrier eventually was about two hundred dollars. And if you want to get something new, 10 years ago is where sim racing, as we know it, really started, honestly. Inside sim racing was in the beginning of its golden age, and other sim racing channels like Jimmy Broadbent and Game of Muscle videos were either inspired by them or got boosted themselves because of their rise. They started out as a website for the longest time, and then branched out to YouTube when that, got, that started getting popular, probably around 2005 or so. No, not 2005, like 2006, maybe 2007. That's when YouTube got traction. But we'll go more in depth about them in the next section. Now keep in mind, I have never bought a new wheel, and I will only do so if I feel necessary, like I recently did. Like the wheel I'm going to be upgrading to pretty soon, I'm going to be getting new because I want that security also so I can build on its character. And if it's, I have yet to decide on what to name it. Because just calling a jury rig along with my sim racing rig, I feel like is a bit, uh... Not cheap, but uninspired. So, Inside Sim Racing basically created what we know as Sim Racing on YouTube today. It inspired many channels to make Sim Racing content. I would say myself, but that would be wrong because Jimmy Broadbent did. I don't know who inspired him, but if Inside Sim Racing didn't, the person who did was most likely inspired by Inside Sim Racing as well. Many people got exposed to Sim Racing, uh... That's how many people got in exposure to sim racing. How did I get into it? Well, as a question for another section. Any of the ways. So many channels were created because of inside sim racing have made because of their... E so many channels have been branched off from inside sim racing because of the creator's toxic nature or the original host's partner breaking off or future channels seeing it and thinking, hey, that looks fun, and doing it. I don't know who inspired the Sim Racing Garage, but thanks to Inside Sim Racing and Sim Racing Garage, channels that have greatly detailed reviews on Sim Racing hardware are plentiful. And this is his opinion that is a, that is an immeasurably good thing, because my Sim Racing stuff is a level I would call good enough. Not the best, but not the not it's not the worst either. And it totals about five hundred dollars, not including console or games. It's about to jump to six hundred too because I'm going to be upgrading my wheel to something much, MUCH better and I would now put it in the wow this feels great and much better than the other piece of junk you got category What well, inspired me to start sim racing? Well I got a small taste of it when my dad found the cheap PS2 GameCube and Xbox wheel and I had a blast using that bungee fuss feedback list piece of junk 200 degrees of rotation wheel but it did give me a taste which is what all the sub hundred dollars are supposed to give you then years later, when I was 14, as I posted 9 or 10, I looked up on YouTube something along the lines of cheap, good, bang for your buck racing wheel. I came upon Jimmy's channel, looked up the Dragon Force Pro because I wanted to pay with my, mostly my money and wanted one that could work on the PS2 and 3. So I spent 50 of my own and 20 of my dad's dollar dues, and I got a setup which was my sister's baby table heightened by books and a bed with a million pillows supporting my back that forces me to sit up. Anyway, seven months passed and it's Christmas, so I asked for a new and much better wheel. I got I got it as well as a really good value set of pedals I, that I don't plan on swapping out for for a while. And you have me and my rig today, where I have probably the best value for your money set up ever, and it's going to only get better hopefully by Christmas. Actually, my new wheel is coming in two weeks, and I'm excited as hell. And that's my sim racing journey from then to now. Now, if you take any issue with any of the things that I said and the way I said them, leave a comment down below 
And I'll tell you why you shouldn't care about what some dude on the internet thinks and says. That being said, this is the rusty doorknob, slowly corroding away.